it's it's clear that the um, this kind of espionage is able to secure an unfair advantage, which is something that we've been fighting against for three years in our trade cases. Um, we we want to be competing with solar producers and not the Chinese government. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because if you look at the kind of uh, activity that's alleged to have happened, it's spying on your strategic decisions, isn't it? Right down to pricing. Yeah, and also the indictment details that there is actually evidence we were providing and submitting into our trade cases that were targeted as well. So um, e even as we're trying to bring uh, a remedy to illegal trade practices on the part of China, which has already um, hurt a lot of companies and American manufacturing workers, uh, the, the Chinese government apparently is going in through the back door and... Uh, trying to undermine our attempt to, to ask our government to apply the law. And ultimately, this affects your market share? Yes. And uh, in terms of uh, what happens next, uh, will you be claiming for damages? Um, I, I believe our chairman has said that we will be looking into any and all possible legal recourses, but I don't know more about that than what he said. And, uh, of course, this all goes back a few years now, uh, this alleged activity, the infiltration of your emails, etc. Since then, what kind of actions have you taken at Solar World to ensure this won't happen again? Well, it, we were alerted fairly early on uh, by federal authorities about the, the breaches, and we immediately conducted a comprehensive audit. And as a result... As a result of that audit of our IT security, we have made a number of changes to make what was already a secure system quite a bit more secure. So just to make it clear, you were actually alerted to this uh, by officials. It wasn't something that you suspected yourself at Solar World. That's correct. So when this actually came out, there must have been quite, quite a devastating um, reaction from the company itself. Well, uh, uh, perhaps, but we weren't so innocent to believe that there wouldn't be attempts to monitor our communications around the trade cases. So we had thought that we were taking adequate precautions, but the, the Chinese uh, agents were apparently clever enough to, to, to get around them. This is really fascinating stuff, and it links directly in uh, with some news which came again out of America in February last year. And if, if my memory serves me correctly, some of those names that Dominic was referring to there are the same names uh, that an American cybersecurity firm identified. Uh, the cybersecurity firm is called Mandiant. Uh, they're based in Washington, D.C. Uh, they'd done some work privately uh, on behalf of, of their clients, their clients being big American and indeed big British companies uh, and they had narrowed down a building in Shanghai that was owned by the People's Liberation Army. It housed uh, a unit of the People's Liberation Army and they said that that was effectively a global hacking HQ. Now at the time this was simply a private American cyber security company uh, alleging that they'd uh, identified this building but we, I remember Jay Carney, the, uh, the uh, State Department spokesman, the White House spokesman excuse me, saying at the time that they were looking into this, clearly it's taken them some time, but I'm pretty sure this is all linked into the same thing. Uh, and interestingly, some of the details coming out of the American media are suggesting uh, that at least some of these American companies uh, who may well have uh, had some of their uh, industrial information stolen uh, are to do with nuclear power uh, and also solar panels. Now, it's interesting to note that over the past few years, China has become very, very good at building nuclear power stations and is the world's largest producer of, uh, of solar panel systems. So uh, no direct link there, but certainly that is something interesting uh, that they'll be looking into. And you know, there has, this has huge diplomatic implications uh, globally, uh, but certainly between the United States and China, whose relationship right now is terrible. Uh, President Obama was in the region uh, recently, but he didn't come to China. He wasn't invited to China. Dip uh, diplomatically, things are not good. But it has implications too uh, in terms of uh, commerce between the UK, uh, America, America and China. Every country wants to do business in China now, but if they do business in China, they have to realize that there are huge risks. And it seems, if these indictments are correct, that these are risks not from private individuals in China, uh, but risks from the government. This is state state-sanctioned uh, espionage, so the Americans are saying. I, I should also stress, it's interesting, you know, there's a British foreign minister in China at the moment. He 
He's here on a trade delegation. I was speaking to his officials uh, two days ago before they left. I said, can I speak to you while you're in China? They said no, because we're not allowed to take our mobile phones to China. Our foreign office mobile phones are not allowed here. Why? Because they don't trust the Chinese not to hack into them.